and I call to order this regular meeting of the Page County School Board. Mr. Yes. 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 Please pause for a minute of silence as we prepare for the meeting tonight. Stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Fox, do you have any agenda changes or additions? I do. This evening, um, we'd like to remove the um, 6.01, the consent agenda. And we're going to add two action items under 8. So 8.04 will be personnel action A. And 8.05 will be personnel action B. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion by Ms. Alger and a second by Ms. Sullivan Smoot to approve the agenda as amended. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. 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 I have a motion to certify matters discussed in closed session. I make a motion to certify <clears throat> personal matters discussed in closed meeting section 2.2-3711A1. We have a motion by Dr. Painter and a second by Ms. Calder to um, approve matters discussed in closed session. Yes. 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 Can I have a motion to approve the November minutes? I make a motion that we approve the November minutes and present it for a second. We have a motion by Ms. Sullivan Smoot and a second by Mr. Googler to approve the November minutes. Yes. 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 Right. Seven point zero one monthly financials and secrets. Um, yes. Good evening, board members. You all have been provided with the monthly financial report for December, where the expenditure and revenues were four million one hundred fifty six thousand. $368.57. Along with that, you have been provided with the local match calculation that we did balance with the treasurer's office. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. All right, just for their sake. Mm -hmm. Well, we have these informational things. They can ask questions, right? So you guys, if you want to ask anything, go for it. I just know the last two times it's kind of been crooked, so. Right. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Christie. Dr. Johnson, Human Resources and Business Operations. Yes, good evening, members of the board. Uh, tonight, I'm going to give you just a few operations and human resources updates on what's been going on the last few weeks, uh, things that we thought you and the public would be interested in. First of all, you recall that we received a grant several months ago for these critical response um, group 
maps and those these were where we could get our buildings and facilities mapped identified with numbers uh all kinds of the uh, gas and electrical shut off all of the emergency things tagged to the buildings um these are just just photos that i pulled these are actually the left is one of the shendo elementary ones the right is the Luray elementary one the, the live maps administrators can actually can actually come in and really get clarity on even the small things that are hanging on the walls, the uh, the AED units and things of that nature, where there's the shutoff valves. So these are complete. We're really, really pleased with them. They're in the hands of administrators. Um, there's a member of CRG that's working with local law enforcement to make sure that, that they implement them as well. One of the things I think that happened is when we got the life spot, it maybe overshadowed this a little bit. This was the initial uh, thing that we were working on through the grant funds, so we didn't lose any money on it. Um, but then life spot came behind it with the two things in place. We feel really good about emergency response and being able to get somebody in a given location on a school map quickly. So I just thought you'd be interested to know that if we have them, they're complete and uh, they're distributed at this point. As I just mentioned, LifeSpot, um, we are finished our first round training. And what I mean by that is every employee group has had an opportunity to train. Obviously, when you're training that many people, there are a few that miss here and there. Um, and so we are now in the process of just getting some makeup training scheduled. One of the challenges is when you train in a building, everybody that's tagged to that building gets the emergency tone, even in the drill mode. So we have to kind of be careful when we do it so we're not too disruptive to staff in that building. And even if staff are, even if I do one at 7 o'clock at night, those staff are going to get that tone wherever they're at. So, uh, so we're working on that makeup training, and then we want to run one final drill with law enforcement as well, and then that's going to become active. So we're hoping in the next two or so weeks, we think that LifeSpot will be uh, usable and ready. Yeah. I was asked about this at the last board meeting, and they arrived. So we talked about getting the school resource officers as grandmaster keys. Uh, they arrived uh, in our possession just a couple of days ago. So uh, I've been in touch with Officer Cavanis, who oversees the SROs, and we're going to set up some procedures, sign out procedures, expectations if you hold a key if you're an SRO. Uh, when we want to get them back, I'm thinking at the end of the school year, we'll collect them. We won't just have folks hold them over the summer and then re reissue them. But So just wanted you all to know that uh, uh, we were under the impression that was going to be a pretty lengthy order, and then here they came. So, please. Um, I just wanted you, I told you a lot about HVAC last time. We had a really active winter break, and I do want to publicly thank Mr. Williams. While most people were enjoying time off, he was in the buildings with contractors, and they worked a lot. And so I asked him to give me a quick rundown. You can read this, but you can see the different schools, three unit heaters. I thought a picture tells a thousand words, and I thought it was neat to see the size of some of that equipment that was installed and the location. Sometimes it was in the ceiling, sometimes it was outside, sometimes it was on the roof, but um, several schools there. The other safety thing that we did at Luray Elementary in Springfield, we had immense shrubbery and trees that years ago we had a, uh, uh, two teachers that were spouses that did a really neat garden at Luray Elementary School, and Mr. and Mrs. Mack, and some of you might know them, the local master gardeners, wonderful people. And what they had in place 15 years ago resembled more of a jungle now, and that's unfortunate, but that's reality. Things grew, they were long gone. Mr. Mack came back and he walked through the property at Luray Elementary with us and tagged you should keep this, this can go, this can go, you should keep this. The whole point was, as we put our cameras up for surveillance, we had no visibility. It had gotten so bad that mm -hmm. our camera folks were coming saying, we can't see, it's no point putting a camera here. So, and at Springfield, we had tremendous overhanging uh, of trees on one big section of their track out in the playground area. And so you can kind of see there's a, that left picture look, makes it look pretty bare, but uh, we've had some real nice compliments about how, how necessary what that, what that was. So we've got that finished as well. Uh, the next slide as well just kind of goes on and tells you a little bit more about the extents of the HVAC work. I do want to point out, I put a little comment at the bottom of this slide, and, and it says new equipment with older buildings 
has its shares of pickups to work out. And uh, I told Dr. Fox, I was the principal actually that opened Page High School when Page and Luray High were new. I was the I was the principal that when that building was brand new. And I remember we couldn't wait to get into the new school. And then we got into the new school and all the bells and whistles at first, it didn't quite work right. <laughs> and we I'd get 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. alarm calls because the alarm something wasn't quite right. We're experiencing a little bit of that. And if you look at the right, the pictures are small, but uh, one of them, you just see a thermostat that's it's in a building. And to the right of that, that's what Timmy Williams' HVAC screen looks like, the Johnson Controls has. He can see humidity numbers. He can see temperature numbers. In this example, this was just a week ago, the, the thermostat in the classroom was reading 58 degrees. The screen on Mr. Williams' central office monitoring that is here was reading 70, same location. And so we're having some issues just with balancing and and there's all kinds of things going on as examples. We had one one room that was blowing straight cold air and something hadn't been hooked quite back up with the hot part. And I'm no <laughs> HVAC guy, but uh, something hadn't been wired right. Another thing had been disconnected while they did an install and then they forgot to reconnect. So some of these things we're figuring out as we go. And uh, the principals are aware of that. They've been really patient and helpful with Mr. Williams and helping to say to teachers, we just need to know. Don't expect Mr. Williams can sit in his office and look at it and know because we're realizing it's not always accurate. So we think it's good for folks to know that. And we're getting there. It's going to take some time, but we're getting there. With the amount of equipment that's new, it's just going to take time. So. Um, just to let you know what's still coming, um, Good news, we have um, equipment sitting on site at Luray High and Page High for softball lights. Um, so that project's underway, um, and we are pushing hard to have those lights up and functional by the season. That's the goal here. So we, we're real pleased about that. Uh, still more HVAC, you can see there at, at several schools, uh, rooftop units and pumps and so on. So, uh, But, but uh, we've, we've really... Uh, We've really done well to cover some ground there. And then finally, in the HR world, uh, we have our large Shenandoah Valley Teacher Recruitment Fair this Saturday. Um, Dr. Painter and many of the page admin will all be working Saturday morning at this recruitment fair. Uh, but it is truly, it is our uh, largest opportunity to hire every year. We've many, many years in a row hired quite a few teachers and quality teachers. Uh, I, I typed this up just yesterday and said we had 33 interviews, but we're up to 40 plus now. We're still working. I'm working hard on uh, emailing candidates that have signed up for the fair, but not necessarily with Page County yet. And so we're getting more response saying, oh, yeah, schedule us. And so every 30 minutes, uh, Saturday morning, we're going to take a whole team of administrators to Harrisonburg High. And in all, there's about 170 teacher candidates in the building that day. They're interviewing with, I think it's eight school divisions participating, and they pick who they want to talk to. So we're working hard to sell some folks there. And I really appreciate our administrators, building administrators, central office team. You know, they're all going to be there Saturday, polished and representing Page County Schools. So excited about that. And that's it for HR and operations. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer. On the Page County Middle School, you, it's got two units, split units in the auditorium. What about the gym? So that's on, that's, I say that's underway, meaning we've met with the guy, Dr. Fox and I, and Timmy met. There was some re-engineering that had to happen. Um, it had to do with load on the roof and needing to pull some of that equipment off to the side. And you can correct me if I get any of that wrong, but... They, were getting, they had to reconfigure the ductwork because some of the main equipment was going to be in a different location uh, once they got on that roof and realized, oh, we So all the equipment is up there. It's just getting... I don't know that it's up there, but it's uh, it's underway. I, uh, Timmy says that is... Um, um, Timmy told me last time. I think that may have been in my last report. I wouldn't swear to it, but I think that uh, that we're underway. And okay. So I'm hopeful that this semester we're going to see that completed as well. But... Yeah, I'd have to go back and look, but I'm thinking that may have been the last report. I just heard some reports about a cold game, basketball game. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. 170, is that typical? No. Well, typical, unfortunately, it's typical for the last couple of years. Those of us that have been going, there were years when I started when this fair had six to 700. 
candidates. And we and back then we interviewed all day long because we had to. And now it's uh, it's 8:30 till 11:30, and and we interview fewer in those slots because there's just not nearly the candidates. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> Ms. Rana, introduction office. Thank you. Good evening, board members. So this evening, the instruction department is happy to present to you the draft secondary program of studies for 2023-24. Um, I will ask you to please note that the slides were updated today, as was this PDF, because a couple of folks did catch some typos and some missing things I had to readjust. So this is slightly different than the one that was there earlier in the week. So please take a look at that. Um, and in fact, Mr. Runyon, our Director of Secondary Education, and Mr. Pitts, our CTE supervisor, are going to share with you the process we've been going through and the um, adjustments to the recommended program. Good evening, board members. Um, so we have had a uh, timeline we started by asking the administrators to get feedback from their teachers and from students on what if there are any new courses what they like what, what, what they would like to see so we had them doing that and then in November we met um, as a team at Jenkins Hall it was uh, Miss Ryman and I and the two high school principals and their counselors and we went through all of the the requests, what, what what we would like to see, if we thought it was feasible. You can go to the second one, please. Thank you. Yeah, so we started, go back one more. <laughs> started September, October with high school teachers and administrators suggesting potential new programs of, of, to, to add in. In November, the committee met, we reviewed those, and then quickly, made the changes in the program of study, the draft program, sent it back out to the schools to have another look, help us with edits, make sure we got everything in there. And you can see the committee there that, that all worked together to get that done, including Mrs. Pettit, uh, Mr. Pitt, so that we had the tech center programs and everything we want there. Um, so in the program of studies, the new courses are donated, donated in red. Um, and so they're not exactly the same at each school. For instance, agriculture and power systems, Mr. Kale asked for that because that's um, a popular one. Uh, and they need to, he's got a lot of students that would like to move on to the next one. And theater two was mostly more for Luray High because they have a theater one and those kids would like to move on. So that came out from feedback that they had received. Um, and then now Mr. Pitts is going to talk to you a little bit about the work-based learning. Yeah, so as we uh, look to reintroduce some programs that kind of focus more on CTE um, for career awareness and exploration and preparation, we came up with three programs that we are either uh, introducing or reintroducing into our program of studies. Uh, first, we're going to um, introduce a mentorship program, which is basically a job. A shadowing experience the kids can go out and they can go into their career industries or really they, they can go into any industry um, and just kind of check out and see what the what that industry is like what it's like out in the workforce and you know just kind of get a little bit of experience there uh, there is time limits for this so um, for the mentorship you do have to put in 140 hours uh, you have a, a semester to do it um, and it does have to be connected to a CTE course. That's one of the big uh, changes that the state has really put forward now. So um, as long as, and, and we can be somewhat creative in how we connect things there. The second uh, class that we're introducing, this one's actually reintroducing, is an internship program. Uh, this is more of a job experience, something that you're really interested in doing. Maybe it, it kind of follows your career pathway. Um, that also is a time uh, time requirement there. You have to be 280 hours, which is a lot of time, but you have an entire year to do it. You earn a credit for doing that. And that also has to be connected to a CTE course. And then finally, we're, um, we're proposing a co-op experience. Those are usually paid job experiences, but they connect directly to your uh, career path. They're CTE, the way I would explain that is, it's kind of your CTE class, it's lab, okay? So you're in your classroom and then you're going out and you're really expanded on your hands-on experience there. 
So, of course, 280 hours, you get one credit for that. And, um, of course, it has to be connected to your CTE as well. So that's kind of a job preparation. Uh, we, we feel very strongly about these programs. It allows the students to go out. They experience industry. They decide, you know, if it's, especially if it's a mentorship, hey, you know, I thought I was interested in this, got some experience. Maybe I need to go a different way, or maybe I love this. Maybe this is where I want to go. So we want to put that in the hands of our students. It allows, you know, our community to... Uh, start training our kids in our community, start getting their hands on the youth here, maybe uh, uh, giving them the skills that they need, and then it allows the school system to have access to the resources of the community. So we're really, we're really looking forward to these different things. Of course, there's processes that we're, that we're going through. They'll do a training plan and a training agreement where everybody understands responsibilities and duties and things like that. So we're putting that in place as well for these classes. Just yes, ma'am. On, on the internships and things, are you working on a list of different businesses? And I mean, how's that information going out so places will know that this will be off? Yeah, we're going to work with the chamber for that. Okay. Um, but we'll also look, listen for suggestions and things like that. We're going to stay local, probably within the county. Although I will tell you, last year there was a girl that was interested in um, being a game warden. So I don't know if we could reach out and, you know, national park system and things like that. That's something that we would have to actually. Game warden is BBWR. Yeah, that's state. state there you go. Okay. So there you go. There's local offices in the Okay. So, so, so we'll be reaching out to local businesses, but also the resources that are provided within this community, even even though it may not be, you know, a local office. And it's good to work with the chamber, but all of the businesses <clears throat> and chamber members. So, maybe make sure to cast a wide net. Okay. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, with the community we live in, could you look into having a partnership with? a farm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. like we have like a working farm where students actually go there and figure out if they want that 24 hour day 365 right. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah now a farm is a different workplace experience that's mm -hmm. an sae a supervised agriculture experience mm -hmm. that's something that we'd be looking forward to probably in the future um but right now i, I, I remember when we went to our vactia or virginia cte conference everybody said start slow you know, one person, one program, basically is what you want. We're we're looking to go a little bit quicker, um, but we're definitely looking to expand these workplace programs. All right. And so the second part is some course recommendations to, um, to be edited or removed. So that tells you what we edited and what pages they are on. Um, and I, other items recommended. One of the things we did, um, and Ms. Ryman came up with this suggestion, so it's great. Um, graduation requirements, they're changing every, all the time. And so instead of us having to worry about updating our program of studies and getting that right, we provided links to the DOE where they are um, going to be updated regularly. So we provided live links in there. So that's a little bit. One of our fears has been being discrepant in information. So if we would write something in one place and not remember to update it in this item or this item, that then it's conflicting. So we're trying this route with the links to see if that helps to keep things straight. Just make sure you link the new video. I did. Yes. My, that was part of the original the problem with yeah. the previous. It was the old site. Mm -hmm. Any questions or? My only question is. Like why were why weren't any middle school people involved in the program of studies thing? Because there are some eighth grade mm -hmm. classes, right? Well, we just met with the middle school to start their program of studies, um, but uh, they're aware. But they have a separate one. They have a separate mm -hmm. one, and so that one will be once we uh, not finalize that, we'll bring out. it to you. Oh mm -hmm. yes, yeah, that's a good point. We could may consider renaming it because we do have the middle school one, mm -hmm. or save yourself time and just consolidate. Make, yeah, make mm -hmm. it all one. Mm -hmm. Do you all have any questions? Or... The only thing, thank you both, I appreciate it. The only thing I would add is that, um, of course, our high schools want to be able to start their scheduling, you know, of course, as soon as, soon as possible. So it would be our goal is for presenting this as information tonight, if possible, to have it approved at our next meeting or at least the first one in February. Um, so if you do have questions, though, at any point, please reach out to any of us. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Here uh, on that table of contents page yes. for 
Um, that's that's not regional home. governor school. Yeah. They got cut off. Okay. I have to expand the text box. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The 2023-2024 draft school calendar, uh, Ms. Ryman and Dr. Johnson. Yes. So, I'll get us started, and we're both going <coughs> to chime in. Oh, you need, it's very hard to see on the screen, so they need some copy here. Thank you. All right, so um, Dr. Johnson and Ms. Seacrest and I worked with a committee of staff with representatives from each school and different departments as you can see here on the slide to analyze the calendar that we have this year taking consideration feedback from surveys that were performed and that's helped us get to this point of developing we can go there you go so we met in person three times through october and november um, during that time like i said we reviewed survey data we discussed different aspects of the calendar that have served as well other things that we felt like could use maybe some shifting um, and we just really worked to make sure we were meeting federal and state requirements of course in the development of this calendar um, so the, what's, pre, what's presented here to you this evening was then drafted, sent back out to the committee. We asked them to share with their stakeholders what it, what it looked like to get some last feedback um, throughout December to get to where we are this evening. Uh, the next two slides, we won't read these to you word for word, but they present kind of a synopsis of some of the data that was most pertinent in making some of these decisions. Um, we had some good response levels from staff, or families, we had 493, um, quite a a good response i don't remember the number sorry it's on the next one <laughs> from staff but it was a significant enough that it was you know very valuable input um and if i could tell you in that activity we met as Gabby said several different times and we spent two entire meetings one meeting our committee dissecting the staff input and then another meeting dissecting the uh, parent input and even then our team broke down into team tables of about three four at a table and we spent time looking at it and came back together. What jumped out at you in the data? What are the things you think the community wants or don't want? What are the things you want the staff want, don't or want, want or don't want? And so that's quite a challenge because there's a lot of data and you know there are two very certain ends of the spectrum and start early, finish late, whatever. But mm -hmm. just wanted you to get a picture of that process because it was a very good process with lots of staff representation at the table and lots of data to chew on from the communities that's helpful. And as you can imagine, and just even scanning some of those, you can see where, okay, well, we could try to meet this, but then how do we do this one? So it was a lot of back and forth. Um, kind of the big three, the next slide, please. Um, suggestions we took into consideration were um, the number of students who attended the fair and participate. And frankly, while that number was relatively low, a lot of the conversation that was spurned by the comments in the survey were, yes, but it really is a community event and people are out at the fair during the day, during the evening, enjoying the experience, you know, into the evening. And that can make it hard for families, even if their children aren't actually participating in 4-H related activities. Um, parents and guardians express the challenges of the uh, half days the first week with childcare. That's not that surprising. That is a challenge. And overall, there just seemed to be more flexibility in the feedback around the end of the year than there was around what we do with starting the year. So we went into this definitely planning to hit the 180 school days um, within this calendar, and that's what you'll see here. There are 180 days each semester is split evenly, 90 and 90. Um, what this does is it starts after fair week. So on the draft we gave you, it, school would start on August 28th, and teachers would have work days the week prior and a couple days before, so they get seven work days in. That removes that half day challenge for families. Um, we'll end on June 6th in this draft with a teacher work day on June 7th. Um, another big input area was around winter break and just coming off of that, it was very nice to have that lengthy break. But again, in trying to meet all of these factors that have to be adjusted a little bit. Can't and have and it all. Again, That's, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> While employees enjoy having two full weeks off, 
there are parents who are then trying to figure out child care. So all of that plays mm -hmm. in, you know, when we read the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then um, another big piece was spring break theme time for Easter. So um, what you can see here is a lot of the work days that are gray are positioned strategically near the end of quarters to allow mm -hmm. teachers opportunities to work on grades, things of that nature. Um, anything else? Yeah, another you change. Add? Another change from years prior is um, for the last number of years, in the summer months, um, staff have had Fridays off, and we've done the ten-hour work days. Uh, in polling the staff, again a mixed bag. There are those that really enjoy having those four ten-hour days and a Friday off. There are others, departments particularly, that say we really struggle to get <clears> our <throat> work done in the four days, or we really struggle to schedule meetings. Uh, and so uh, we really looked at that, and so this calendar reflects a little bit of both. It reflects four 10-hour days in June, and it reflects the same through the July 4th week. But then after the week of July 4th, we go back to five days a week, where we, we think July is really okay, boots on the ground, it's time to plan, it's time to meet, start really getting ready for the next school year. And so we thought that was a fair compromise, and, uh, you know, so if you want to use vacation days, you use can. them in June because they're right. worth more. Well, and, 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 and the other, com I'm glad you brought that up, because the other thing we <laughs> talked about with vacation time, though, was, um, you know, this last break and this calendar as well, you're proposing giving uh, employees the whole Christmas break off. Well, if you give them Christmas break off and you continue to do Fridays in the summer, we begin to see employees accrue quite a lot of leave, and we want to use some of that leave. We, we've had that discussion in five years so this is we we said that you know in july if you want fridays take fridays absolutely you've got to leave as a 12-month employee take it uh particularly if you're going to be getting days at christmas that maybe years ago you used to have to take off so we felt like it's a fair, fair presentation oh the one last thing i'll add is uh what we don't have written here though teachers still do have their two flex days in the summer that they work as well this calendar, uh, I think, represents 194 work days for teachers, and they're on a 200-day uh, contract. And that's typical uh, in Virginia. You do leave that wiggle room of extra contract days for assigned duties, night events, weekend events. Um, so it's not typical to try to have 200 scheduled days on a 200-day contract. It's typical to have a few days where you it's more the length. Any questions? Mm -hmm. So, with regards to the August twenty eighth start date, um, how do we align with other school systems in our area? Because I know Shenandoah goes back to the early, and I know uh, we look at that. That, that was actually something we were asked to look at. Mm -hmm. So, one of the meetings we went to we uh we took that to our staff and we had all those dates and certainly uh like to think about shenandoah yeah, they started to move the other way uh sure and then we understood they started to come back uh mm -hmm. if i'm correct i, I think this this year because this past year one of my workmates i mean they go they go early yeah i think right. they're, still they to, they're still going to start early there was just some um, adjustment yeah, related to what happens during care week and and really the fair is the main driving factor for that as well so mm -hmm. part b to that question is how do we align with mass not meeting the government school Great question. that is that is and i need to um honestly i didn't look pull up their calendar and we looked at this um but i was rockingham starting you know dr Payne, regular Payne time is. the same week same week well it's not approved yet but right right, right. Way, it's always and that, which is i do know the same governor school would just because they deal with so many different divisions sure. they take all that into consideration yeah and sometimes the so, kids will have to go early mm -hmm. yes yes and that may be the case there i'd have to double but i can check that calendar we can get you that and answer. that is what's happening in page county mm -hmm. students start on the, if you're a governor school student you start on day one of gov school sure. in spite of your county schedule okay so this one page presentation is wonderful. Mm -hmm.
sage paper and not <laughs> flipping through and getting lost in it too. So it's, okay. it's a great visual. It's a very good point. Good. A great visual. Um, and secondly, just kudos to talking with parents, students, mm -hmm. all that, all the way up through in those levels. That's that's a wonderful thing. I don't think we've always done that, uh, but I think that's one of the missions we gave Dr. Fox when she came on, and I think it's well kept it going. Thank you. Just trying to find that governor's calendar. Do you want to do this year's Marta and Summer? Yeah, any thoughts? What you guys are saying is correct. Normally, with spring break holidays, they fall a little differently than our county. And go um, school all the way starts earlier, like at mm -hmm. least two weeks early. It may not be the same next year because I know that they are going to not be. That's right. And it will change a little bit. Mm -hmm. But some talk to you virtual days or something if yes, they're going to they be off. That. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And you're right, Miss Frame mentioned that the last mm -hmm. time we were That's there right. about mm -hmm. the yeah. Mountain View change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Correct. They might have to fall more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Someone. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fox, Superintendent's up there. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we want to welcome Marta and Summer. Um, we were going to have all three here tonight, but unfortunately, Jackson, he is okay. I'll start with that, but he was involved in an <laughs> automobile accident um, this evening, so he is home resting, but we send him get well wishes um, to that. I do want to take a moment just to congratulate them. Um, the Page High School Scholastic Bowl team, Jackson is a member of that team. Um, they won the district championship, the first ever for Page High School. Um, Marta, you are as well. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, and um, Jackson was named to the first team all district, and Summer Kite was named to the second team all district. So you guys go next February 5th, is that the right day? Second for the regional. So good luck. We wish you all the best and congratulations on that. Um, we certainly just want to welcome um, everybody back um, and say Happy New Year. This is our first board meeting other than your organization <clears throat> meeting, so we just want to welcome everybody back and say Happy New Year. This week is the Virginia uh, Principals Appreciation Week, so we encourage you to give your principals and assistant principals um, a little shout out. There's information on our web page for that, but we want to thank them for all of the hard work that they do day in and day out. Um, they do spend a lot of hours um, doing a lot of different things, so we appreciate all of their hard work and the care that they give um, at the school levels. In terms of COVID, if you guys have been following it, we are seeing a little bit of an uptick, not only here in Page County, but across the state. Um, new variant out that's pretty um, transmissible according to health officials. We are currently right now in the um, yellow zone or in the medium. We were there in December the last time we met here, but um, you can see the change across the state in terms of um, the community transmission rates. We currently, based on our, our dashboard, we have seven active cases um, across the division. That's down from 12 that we had in December. We're still seeing some of those other things, the stomach flu, the respiratory viruses, the strep throat, things like that. So we just encourage everybody to continue washing their hands, using hand sanitizer, staying home when you're sick, um, all of those mitigation strategies. Um, on Monday, January 2nd, which was a student holiday after the break, um, staff returned, but we did offer free COVID testing, um, and there were 81, is that correct, Mr. Fitz, is it 81? It was 81 at Page County High, actually 60, but okay. 141. So, um, 141 kits given out, so we're mm -hmm. excited that people took advantage of that free um, service. That was a part of the VISTA grant that we um, are working with this year, so... We thank everybody for doing that and helping us keep, if anybody was positive or sick, keeping that out of the school. Um, I want to give you an update tonight on um, something called Frontline Student Analytics. So this is something that came out of your um, BSBA School Board um, annual conference when we were there in November. Um, Mr. Painter talked with a, a 
representative <clears throat> there, and then we participated in some online informational sessions with them. Um, and this is a, a pretty, um, I would say, sophisticated, um, actionable student data um, dashboard. And it gives you different insights. So you can take different data points, such as attendance, chronic absenteeism, discipline, course grades, uh, assessment data. Um, and you can look at them in different ways. And then by different student groups, you can look at them across cohort groups um, to get a sense of where students are. They have like what they term an early warning system um, that you can sort of use to project if, if students are not meeting the mark. And then you can uh, use that data to inform what you do in terms of interventions and supports that you provide students. Um, so it's a pretty robust and rich system. It, one of the advantages to it is it does talk directly to PowerSchool, which is our student management system, so that it, data is coming directly from PowerSchool. So there isn't, staff don't have to double input information. It's already in PowerSchool and it folds it from there. Um, so we've taken a look at it and um, in your uh, purchase orders this evening, you'll see a request for the initial implementation and to get it to use for the remainder of this year. <clears throat> I will come back to you with a second request for next year. We've asked for a, uh, a re them to redo the quote that they gave us for next year. But just to give you a little bit of information about that system, it would primarily be used by central office staff and school-based administrators. Um, and it's just a way to now kind of put all of that data in one place um, and access it pretty quickly. There are different ways you can uh, write and request and do queries for reports and things. So if principals want to look at a particular element of something, they have a pretty easy, easy user-friendly way mm -hmm. to um, gather that information quickly in a, a very visual type of format. The example that you see there is from their um, academic readiness dashboard. So that's why you'll see that on your um, proposal tonight for the purchase orders. Just wanted to give you a little bit of background information on that system. And then just a couple of additional updates. Um, strategic planning um, survey is out. As of today, there were 671 responses. So um, it is open through tomorrow. Um, so we do encourage you, if you haven't taken a moment to do it, it was distributed to community, parents, families, businesses, um, students, some of our, our upper level students. And we do have student responses on it, which is great. Um, so we'll take that data and use it in our next um, couple of meetings to make some decisions um, related to our strategic plan that we're developing. Our next meeting is Monday, January the 23rd. Our hope there is to finalize drafts of our mission and vision and then push those out to get feedback from staff and from um, other people. And then to begin outlining our goals so that we can develop that critical piece of that plan. Um, in terms of budget, we um, have our next um, budget hearing is on the 26th of January. Um, February 9th, you guys will have another budget work session at 5 o'clock. Um, February 16th, we are looking forward to our joint meeting with the Board of Supervisors. Um, and that will be at Page County Middle School. We'll do like we did last year, take a little tour, show them a few things. Um, we'll have a short presentation and then the floor is open for you all to have open discussions with the Board of Supervisors about the budget. Um, and then on February 23rd, we'll have our second budget hearing. Um, and then um, at that point, be pretty deep into, you'll have a proposed budget for me, and then we'll be making revisions to it, working with the Board of Supervisors um, with the intent of finalizing a budget for you all in April. I think I guess. Final mm -hmm. And just so that everybody's aware, it is the short session this year in the General Assembly. So they started last weekend um, and they'll end in, on February 11th unless there's a, a need to extend that session. But it is the short, short session this year. So um, they're going to be moving quickly with some things. And there are a number of amendments from the governor's budget um, for consideration. So we'll keep you guys posted on that information. And I believe that's everything for tonight unless you guys have questions. I have a question, but I have a comment. Um, I just want to give kudos to the group that completed that survey or created that survey. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback from parents and just saying, I'm really glad that we're being asked these questions and we're being asked to give our input. So it's nice to hear Tony. Thank you. <laughs> and if anybody talk to folks that they haven't, please do it um, because we really do want and we value their feedback. Yes. Well, I know the PO for the front line is coming up. 
for approval. I'm totally in support of that. I think it's going to take our division ahead as far as data and being able to mine things and how it works. So uh, I think it's uh, thank you for doing the work that you did and then get negotiated as well and making grants happen. So I think it's really a game changer for us. And I will say, um, let me make one correction because of some news we got today um, that we'll make public later. But on your um, purchase order request, it does say that that funding is coming out of instructional funds, but it is going to be covered through grant funds. So it won't be coming out of local funds. Thank you. You see first approval of claims for payment. Um, yes, good evening again, board. You all have been provided the claim certification where the operating fund is $226,134.77. The CIP fund was $226,007.07. Food service fund, $12,155.35 for a total of $464,297.19. Along with that, you've been provided with the list of claims as well as the check registers. And if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Make a motion that we approve the claims for payment as presented. Second. A motion by Mr. Dubler and a second by Mr. Sullivan Smoot to approve the claims for payment as presented. Yes. 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 Ms. Seifers, the approval of purchase orders over 10,000? Um, yes, board, we have one purchase order over 10,000 for the frontline education. That is $14,951.92 that will now be grant funded instead of various instructional funds. So can you go through the negotiation that you had with the, with the group? So that where tool, started and where you ended up. <laughs> so take Dr. Fox to negotiate any of your business deals that you need. Um, <laughs> she, um, we, we met with the gentleman, you know, did a virtual meeting and um, we were at, um, I believe just for the subscription to the program, we were at over $18,000 mm -hmm. plus the implementation cost, which is about 9,000. So um, we were able to get that down. So the student analytics lab subscription is now $5,801 and the implementation is $9,000. So you, you cut the quote almost in half, yes. right? Uh -huh. Yes, sir. And that's the value of being able to say no and we don't want it, right? Yeah, right. So you use that so, tool. So thank yeah. you for that. And I just need to add the absence management portion of it. Mm -hmm. Your school office is full bucket. Mm -hmm. Is that more money? Oh, it is. Frontline is good. It's it's a good product. It's just not cheap. Okay. But it's good. Product. But yeah. I make a motion that we approve the purchase orders as presented. Second. With a motion by Mr. Painter and a second by Ms. Alger to approve the purchase orders over ten thousand as presented. Yes. 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 Ms. Seifers, resolution for reallocation of funds? Yes, and I will read this resolution into the record. <laughs> um, it is fairly short. So, resolution to the Page County Board of Supervisors requesting adjustment of the 2022-2023 school budget for the fiscal year 2022 year-end funds. Whereas the fiscal year of 2021-2022 school operating budget had an approved appropriation of local county funds of 10 million $389,932, and whereas the actual amount transferred to meet budgeted expenditures was $9,283,833.11, and whereas the actual amount transferred was $1,106,098.89 less than the budgeted amount, and whereas the fiscal year 2021-2022 school capital improvement budget had an approved appropriation of local county funds of $1 million, and whereas the actual amount transferred to meet budgeted expenditures was $949,883.60, and whereas the actual amount transferred was $50,116.40 less than the budgeted amount, and now therefore it be resolved that the Page County School Board respectfully requests that the Page County Board of Supervisors to appropriate 
$265,110 for staff bonuses to the school division operating budget and $891,104 for capital improvement projects to the school division capital improvement budget, which would increase local appropriations. Page two has two different um, amendment tables. Fund one is in the first one there for the operating with the bonuses, and that is broken down by category since we are categorically funded. And then fund two is in the next table showing the capital improvement allocations. This is to certify that the foregoing resolution was authorized by the Page County School Board during its regular session on Thursday, January 12, 2023. So I'd like to request just the uh, um, information for our students. Okay. How does this, what is this process and how does, how does it work here? As far as just with this specific, yeah. so the budget. So at the end of the year, so the county allocates money to the school division at the start of every budget season. We don't we don't spend it all or have them transfer it to our account to pay for expenditures. We have what is called year end funds. So we had year end funds of um, over one million dollars. So the county can then decide with those funds whether they want to keep them and do something else in the county with them, or whether they want to give them back, reallocate them to the school division. And usually the agreement in the past has been to do that in a capital improvement project. So one-time expenditures to do things in facilities usually is how. So then this request will then go to the county, to the Board of Supervisors, and they will then vote to decide whether they will appropriate this money back to us for this budget season. And we'll see if we'll ask for rewarded or not for being fully responsible categorically. But <laughs> yes, categorically. Yes. Any other questions I can answer? I make a motion that we approve the resolution for reallocation of funds. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Painter and a second by Mr. Painter for the resolution of reallocation of funds. <coughs> yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. 8.04 approval of personnel action A. I make a motion that we approve personnel action A. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Painter and a second by Mr. Bubler to approve personnel action A. Dr. Painter. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Abstain. Yes. Yes. 8.05, approval of personnel action B. Make a motion that we... Uh, approve approve. <laughs> approve uh, personnel action B. Perfect. We have a motion by Mr. Bubler and a second by Ms. Alter to approve personnel action B. Yes. 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 Abstain. Yes. 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 Nine point zero one board member discussion time. I have two. Um, I have just received as of today more information on the upcoming spring event that's going to be held at Stanton High School on April the 11th. Uh, look at your calendars. They are asking for a number of who will be attending because it will include a meal as well. And uh, so I'd say by Mm, by our next meeting, let me know if that's going to work into your schedule. Um, also, I have gotten two judges for sure for the art show, and one of those is getting another judge. I'm probably going to go with a, an alternate on because I have I've got one from this county, but there's a possibility of not being able to be there. So in case that would happen, the alternate can pick up. 
And uh, I'm giving all that info, getting all that information about when they need to be there and so forth to them. So the main thing from us is that he's going to be attending that meeting. The social hour will go from five to six. The dinner will be at six to one. And then right now, the guest speaker is going to be Chuck, the ag teacher at in Shenandoah County and Pete Mark. I mean, uh, Matt Moore. He's going to be the speaker. So, uh, again, I'll, I'll email all of you that information, but I will need to know maybe by our next meeting, you know, who can, who's planning to attend. I will send you all that. Uh, so I've written down some comments, just bear with me. Uh, I'm speaking tonight about our county and the people that I love. <clears throat> we are in a crisis, a crisis of family, student physical and mental health. Our county is made up of many good people that form organizations to help their fellow man. Our schools, teachers and administrators care deeply for the children in their charge. However, I am, I feel that we are fighting a battle, and to be quite frankly, I believe we are losing it. This battle will take a greater cooperation between our citizens and organizations. It will require participation. People will need to double their efforts, and many good citizens will need to come out of retirement. We must find this purpose. Our county has two families that work in our PCPS system and law enforcement who have shown love and compassion for children that are in need. May God bless them for it. We need more, type, more of this type of involvement. In the last several weeks, our law enforcement has made many arrests. Now it goes to the courts to get convictions, and that is a big if. These arrests leave a wake of victims in the aftermath of the crimes. Each crime victim are personally hurt, some emotionally, <clears throat> some mentally, and some sexually. Where do those people or children go to receive the care and knowledge to recover their lives? Where do they find hope and coping mechanisms through the pain of a bad and hor horrible memory? Many times the burdens of victims are addressed in our school system. Our administrators and central office spend a good portion of their times finding solutions to address the multitude of needs. While they are doing that, we are not focused on instruction, which is what the schools are supposed to do. I spoke to a law enforcement leader last week about this effort to help others. And they mentioned that 40% of their time, they estimated, is spent on non-law enforcement matters. I assume that the 40% of the time for some of our school administrators and central office personnel is spent on non-school related instruction as well. Page County Public Schools has provided transportation to guardians to help with student issues. You have worked to find resources to help with family and student issues. Our county is underserved with regards to homeless housing, transitional housing, and mental health. Many good and well-meaning organizations exist, but we are not coordinated across each organization or our local government. Dr. Fox and Megan, I ask you as leaders that you both get a conversation started with our Board of Supervisors, town councils, agencies, law enforcement, and the faith community. To our teachers, stay engaged, encourage citizenship and empathy. To our students, speaking to you two, venture outside of your clique or your group of friends. 
Go sit with the student eating alone. Ask someone that you never speak to, how are you doing? Tell them that you believe in them. Abraham Lincoln once said, I am a success today because I had a friend who believed in me and I didn't want him to let him down. Lose your labels and take compassion and show some love. This past Tuesday, I felt overwhelmed, defeated, and helpless. I'm a positive person, but I, had, I was down. But I refuse to stay there. Anxiety happens when you think you must figure everything out at once. Working together, we can make this county better, more helpful, and whole. So let's get started. Thank you. Add, we'll kind of piggyback off of that a little bit um, and give accolades to um, Joe Lucas, who is the Blu-ray High School girls basketball coach, and he created a program with his girls where he gave them these, these cards and had them go out to people in the community, whether it be you know, someone at school having a hard time, and give them these cards to help them with extra gas money or just you know, someone to talk to or just give me a resource. And so it was really encouraging. I know, you know, Summer, you're part of that. Um, I think it's just an awesome thing that he's doing and going beyond just basketball and the game of that to encourage citizenship. So. I just want to um, echo what Dr. Fox said earlier during her presentation and just talk about something very briefly that that's very unique. I think last spring, I think Ray High girls soccer went and did something they never, they never did before. They, they got to districts, I think, or perhaps further. And then I just want to say again what she said about the um, about the scholastic pool team at Page County High winning their first ever district title. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to give appreciation to our principals. You know, I know they work very hard and it's not always easy and they've got you know a lot in front of them. But you know, I'm I'm new I'm new to this, but I'm not new to the schools and, and being in the building being in the buildings and you know, I've seen them, they've just presented themselves so well and they handle themselves so well and just been very impressed. So thank you. And Yes. Yeah, I mean, I think all of it, uh, we do appreciate everything that everybody does. And thank you to the principals and the assistant principals. Um, just from what Mr. Painter said, you know, at least 40% of their time probably spent on other things rather than instruction that's spent on everything else. So I think the school system is pretty much everything to a kid. You know, it's it's that fills that void of, of being everything it's a lot on everyone's shoulders but together we we can i mean it is easy to get down mr painter don't ever don't don't sit there we've got we definitely have too much to do but um together we can get a lot done and we're making we're, we're making progress and i think we're going to keep making progress so thank you to everybody for everything you do and thank you thank you for your comments mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Make the motion any Second. We have a motion by Dr. Painter and a second by Mr. Dubler to adjourn. Yes. 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 yes.